Hello and welcome back to Vintage Story. <clears throat> well, uh, it's gonna be a big day. It's a big day. I mean, uh, I say this a lot, I guess, but it's kind of a culmination of a lot of uh, tasks done, a lot of little chores kind of amounting to a hilt. And uh, so today we're going to be working on both the, the new windmill uh, making it good and proper as well as trying to put the final pieces into place for automated smithing and um, You know in the meantime, I have to unfortunately get a bunch more animal fat and uh, You know I do a bunch of exploring. I've been exploring the zone a little bit farther pushing the boundaries just a little bit and, uh, trying, to, trying to, to find some new locations trying to find some new uh, mines um, I definitely, like, I'm starting to feel the edge of my current technological advancement. Like, once we have, uh, metal smithing or automated metal smithing, uh, set up, then we can start to actually think about iron in terms of, like, you know, what, where we're headed, what we're doing next. Uh, and then maybe eventually steel. Um, but all of that is, like, very advanced. And honestly, right now, I'm not even, like, fully... Uh, in the picture in terms of like how it all works how to get iron where to get iron what to do with it even is it just a harder material is it just a for better tools better armor that kind of stuff so um, in the meantime I'm gonna be making some arrows <clears throat> excuse me I'm gonna be making a ton of arrows because I need to of course get more animal that this is uh I, I check on these flax weeds or whatever plants uh a number of times and you know when flax is like very close to you know its maturity uh is when i get like really antsy about it because it's like you know just like finish growing for god's sake because i you know I'm, I'm sick of waiting um so of course we need to smelt some more stuff i i have a lot of or some materials at least um in the next uh, episode we'll probably be doing a lot of mining and it will be a little bit shorter because no one wants to watch me mine but i wanted to get this uh this anvil set up and i you know this is something i worry about because the anvil is such an immense immense uh like i don't know just like spending of materials it's it's like you it's like 800 units of a material of, of metal um you know copper bronze or otherwise uh, one material is just like gone and I'm a little bit worried that bronze wasn't good enough like I, I've made the next anvil out of bronze and I didn't want to just like move the copper one upstairs because I do still want to do things in that uh, smithing shop but um, you know I so I don't know if bronze is good enough is the is my main concern it's something that uh, I'm a little bit worried about and I don't want to have to make another one uh, I think eventually we'll probably have to make an iron one and that's gonna suck but uh, for now we're working with bronze and bronze is good enough I'm still working on this like leather uh, I do actually I, I am kind of happy with you know all of this work spent because in the next episode it actually kind of comes to some fruition but hey there we go uh, a anvil placed and so um, finally we can we can do some automated smithing, right? Why isn't it working? Why isn't it moving? There's no movement. What's going on? Uh, there's there's no wind. There's no wind, in fact. So I had to busy myself with other things while I waited for the wind to, you know, do its thing, which, you know, that, that's just a bummer. But uh, hey, this flax still hasn't grown. We're going to check that at least two more times, uh, of course. And, uh, you know, in the meantime, we'll, we'll work on other things. We'll get a forge going. We'll, we'll fill it with coal and, and, and uh, actually start to warm these blocks of uh, bronze because I'm going to do some automated smithing. And what am I doing? Why am I doing this? I went ahead and heated those bars up knowing full well that there was no wind. And I just kind of hoped that the wind would start. And I just, like, watched those bars cool down while the wind refused to blow and hey a bear oh my god a bear why is there always a bear why is there always a bear oh my god that really is terrifying you know when you like running as fast as you can and you see a bear keeping pace with you right behind you 
So, uh, of course, I had to uh, get vengeance on this bear. And uh, a technique I might try this again in the future is to run it through the water so that it slows it down and it gives me a bit more, you know, breathing room to shoot it with copious arrows. It's a, not a great use of arrows. You only get two fat from the bear. So it's it's probably not a, it spends, takes a lot of arrows to take down a bear. But hey, there's the wind. It's finally working. And we're going to go ahead and uh, heat these bars up again. Uh, and uh, we've got our transmission. We've got our clutch. I didn't want to uh, hook in our clutch until I was ready. And you can see there, I've actually disconnected the, the kern because I didn't want uh, the extra power to go to that. So uh, I go ahead and select the bronze plate. I come to an unfortunate conclusion in the next episode, which is that um, that dialogue screen is very misleading. It really leads you to believe that, hey, automated smithing can do anything. We can go ahead and, you know, like automate uh, making arrows. And isn't that awesome? No, 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 in fact, incorrect. Um, it only does plates, I think. Uh, I really wish documentation about this stuff was a bit better. Um, there is in-game uh, documentation and there is wiki documentation and neither of them really, um, you know, adequately outline what in the world automated smithing is for, what you do with it, how it, how it works. They say that it's good for like setting up iron blooms and that's cool. What's an iron bloom? Why, why are we so vague about these things? I don't know how this stuff works. Like I'm not, I'm not, uh, you know, I, I, I didn't have a, a degree in this, in this like historical age, you know, maybe I'm just super ignorant, but like on the, at the same time, uh, you know, what a wonderful, um, opportunity to teach me a thing, uh, about that. But anyway, I, I really don't know what I'm doing from this point on. So I'm going to have to like look up some videos uh, from, you know, other more educated YouTubers than, my, than myself and uh, figure out what the heck I'm doing. In the meantime, I am actually trying to do crop rotation. I have noticed that the turnips um, are not happy in the, in the sun. You know, nothing worse than an unhappy turnip. And so I've opted for uh, onions or carrots instead. So I am actually starting to work in crop rotation. Haven't yet put the terra firma uh, or whatever it's called, the terra uh, soil in the garden yet. But now that um, flax, flax is officially farmed in the next episode. You can see me losing my mind and patience with it there. And I'm cutting down the already mature flax. And I, I just kind of like let the... Uh, the rest of the unmature flax like chill and vibe you know for a couple days but you know we don't need a lot i just need enough to make um three more uh you know blades for the windmill three more blade upgrades and that'll bring it to um it's it's full uh you know it's final final form you know super saiyan 4 kind of thing so go ahead and slap those blades on the windmill and uh, check it out there it is it's no longer a pinwheel it is now a fully functioning uh fully powered windmill and now we have two windmills both powering our devices is and isn't that nice isn't that wonderful so the only thing left to do really for me to consider this uh, setup to be um more or less set up you know more or less complete is um the addition of another transmission and clutch for the kern you might think that's overkill i don't care um i would prefer oh right this is this is actually where i found the ter terra preta i i guess i spoiled that i thought that that was in the last episode but yeah i found a huge pool here a huge amount of terra preta soil which like this stuff has got to be more valuable than gold because like what you know it's rare it's stupidly rare i don't even know if you can like find the stuff uh normally so i and i found almost a full stack of it so that's gonna go in my farm i don't know where and i don't know what i'm going to be rotating with it but um definitely we're going to be you know using that um and that's that's super exciting but, yeah sorry i spoiled that yeah terra frida what a what a find um we're, we're killing more animals we're getting more fat 
good to do this in the summer you know while while uh the animals are, are nice and, and plump um so that we actually can get fat from them because uh you know after that once we're in the winter time i won't be able to do that as often because they're they're not going to have that material a nice little detail another little nice immersion detail of vintage story that i do appreciate um because we have to take advantage of that while we can and uh one of these poor animals kind of fell in this little hole here and i had to go and grab it uh and you know if they fall if they die from fall damage that actually affects the materials you get another like a little immersion thing um this uh, pickling area is really starting to come together and you know i didn't mean for this area to turn into a pickling area but i'm glad that it has and it really has like kind of um you know gotten some character of itself but yeah i i, I really appreciate this whole pickling pickling area it really feels like it, it's like form and function coming together in a very beautiful way it's exactly um the kind of aesthetic that like i uh strive to achieve in this game is like it's something that just kind of naturally occurs it's like hey i i, I want to pickle vegetables and hey i want to pickle a lot of vegetables because you can't really pickle more than one type of vegetable in one barrel so i'm going to need a lot of barrels so therefore i'm going to need an area for all of those barrels to be because you know if you're going to have uh one task one kind of chore uh one activity then you may as well do that one activity with like lots of resources so then that kind of establishes an area for that activity i know it's a lot of words to mean something very simple but really all it means is that um you know a function finds its place in my living space and that makes it feel lived in and that's that's sort of been the theme of this entire series is i want things to feel lived in and I didn't even really intend for that area to, to feel like that. But anyway, there's our transmission and there's our clutch. And there it goes. And look at that. Our machinations really are coming together. We have two transmissions and two clutches. And therefore I can do uh, one thing or another. Um, it really is kind of like, uh, you know, it, it's old school uh, programming language. We've got an or gate in a way. Um, and I've decided that I was going to kind of dig away the wall there so that I have the chimney um, as part of the wall and I'll probably see if I can't make a hood at some point for a forge and uh, we'll have a second forge and then we can like do plates whenever we want probably we'll want plates for uh, armor at some point but I'm not sure that'll be for the next age I suppose the next season who knows if you've enjoyed this, definitely hit that like button and consider subscribing for more content like this. I'll see you guys next time. Take it easy.